I'm already sweating looking at all this cheese. <laughs> so, <laughs> Amelia, go get the lactate. <laughs> Hey everybody, I'm Vaughn, coming at you from the NYT Cooking Kitchen Studio. Today we're gonna to be making some grilled cheeses. I woke up this morning and I just really wanted something super comforting and so I was like, a grilled cheese would be absolutely perfect today. And we have this really cool grilled cheese recipe from one of our reporters, Julia Moskin. It uses this really interesting technique where you put mayonnaise on the outside, butter on the inside, you cook the two sides separately, and then you sandwich them together. And obviously, you all have a lot of opinions about that. So I decided to go through the comments and pick out things that I thought were really interesting that y'all have said worked for you. I'm going to make the recipe as intended, and then I'm gonna pull some of those comments that people have said, you know what, I tried it this way and it worked for me better that way. And then I'm gonna try different cheeses, different breads, different fillings, and I'm going to make my perfect grilled cheese. So the anatomy of a grilled cheese, you've got your fat on the outside of the bread. You've got the bread itself. You've got maybe fat on the inside of the bread, which this recipe does. You've got cheese, and then you've got all of that all over again. I'm really going to treat this as an experiment. I really want like my controls and my variables. So for the purposes of finding out like the technique based on what you all have said in the comments, I'm going to use white bread and I'm going to use cheddar cheese, mayonnaise, and unsalted butter. That's it. So, got your white bread, your classic Wunder bread. So I'm gonna start how you may have usually started a grilled cheese with some softened butter. When you're making any sandwich, you simply must spread whatever you're spreading to the edges of the bread. Here's where it gets a little tricky. So you flip the bread over, and then that's when you go in with the mayonnaise. The mayonnaise is not there for flavor, it is there to promote browning, because mayonnaise, it is like eggs and oil. It is, it is all things that, you know, promote browning and the Maillard reaction when they hit the pan. And a lot of people in the comments section have said that mayonnaise is actually almost better than butter because butter does burn. And it'll burn your bread quicker than mayonnaise will burn it. So once you've got everything spread to all the edges there, that's when you turn your pan on. I'll let it heat up for a second because this is cast iron so it'll take a, a hot minute. I always hated how when you do the butter on the bread and you flip it on to the, it like always really irked me that like butter got all over my cutting board. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know what I could have been doing? You know what would have been a really good use of my time <laughs> grating the cheese? <laughs> wow. Call back to the chocolate chip cookie video. When you buy chocolate chips that have that coating on them, it actually prevents them from spreading. Same thing with cheese, it, when you buy pre-shredded cheese, it has anti-clumping agents in it that make it actually like stay shredded in the bag rather than just solidifying into a mass. Shred your cheese from a block of cheese. And for all sandwiches henceforth, I'm not even gonna bother testing out the pre-shredded cheese just because I know that this is gonna be better. You actually go into the pan with mayonnaise side down, butter side up. This is different from the way that a lot of people have probably made grilled cheese before, in that you cook the bread on two separate sides, almost like an open-faced sandwich. Then you go in with your cheese on both sides, and you let the cheese actually get melty in the pan on the separate sides of bread before you flip them over and sandwich them. I think that this is a really good tip to make sure that you know you have evenly melted cheese throughout and evenly browned bread on both sides. So this is all in service of creating a very even sandwich. I do think that that's like one of the best things about a grilled cheese though is when the cheese does ooze out a little bit and then you get that like lacy crispy cheese on the outside. Oh my God. All my cheese was not melted, but I did go ahead and flip it because the residual heat from each side will end up finishing melting the cheese on the inside when you sandwich it together. 
Oh, well, that was a little burnt. <laughs> but you know what? <laughs> We're learning. Okay, this honestly looks really good and iconic and I'm very excited about it. This side did get a little bit dark, but it's not burned. <laughs> and it actually smells really good. All right, quick poll from the studio. How should I cut this sandwich? I think your grilled cheese should be diagonal, but non grilled cheese should be vertical. Wow, interesting. Huh, Amelia? Yeah, yeah, it's gotta be Han. Diagonal, diagonal all the way. I, <laughs> we work with some of the brightest minds. Here we go. I don't know if I'm gonna get a cheese pull. Let's see. It smells incredible. It looks really nicely brown. The cheese is all very evenly melted. The butter adds this like extra kind of layer of richness. The mayonnaise on the outside created for like a really nice, even golden brown. But I'm really excited to kind of dive in and see, you know, some of the suggestions that you all have made and, you know, try and see like what else might work. What may work better? But this was good. This was a really good control test. And let's get going with some variables, shall we? I do think that this recipe has some pretty funny comments, so let's check it out. My first trip to Vegas as a very young bride, room service sent grilled cheese with slightly garlicky butter. Heaven. The marriage didn't last, but the garlic butter idea did. In these troubled times, what a delight to read all of the notes and feel all of the tone of sharing something near and dear to each person's heart. First of all, I will have what he's having. Ah, mayo? Disgusting. Cheddar cheese? Or don't bother. I feel like sometimes people come onto the comment section in an effort to like really cause a stir. Like, I didn't have any bread, so I substituted pasta. And I'm allergic to cheese, so I used asparagus and said, delicious. Did Mim's mom write that so that one day a boy in a pink shirt on a YouTube channel would read it? So I see a lot of comments about covering the pan. So I have a lid here that I am gonna cover it, and I think that that may help the cheese melt a little faster without the bread burning, so we're gonna try that. I see a lot of comments that adding butter on the inside is kind of maybe a little overindulgent, so we're gonna see. I, I did like it in the first sandwich, so I'm gonna just see the differences in the two. I do think that I've got, I've got a really good handle on some like very solid suggestions here, so I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna dive in. The first thing that I'm gonna try is one that I think popped up the most when I was just parsing the comments, which was covering it. These little like butter knives are so silly. <laughs> They're just so silly. What is this, a knife for ants? <laughs> um, how I normally make grilled cheese is I do this. And so that way like I don't get butter all over my cutting board. And then I would maybe go in with the mayonnaise. Is that too much of a, a variable here? No, all right. I'm able to kind of do it, <laughs> so I don't know. And then I just got mayonnaise on the cutting board, but whatever. But then all you have to do is open it like that. I might be on to something there. I shredded a bunch of cheese, and if you ever have like a grilled cheese party and need to shred a bunch of cheese, uh, a food processor really makes light work of it. I'm gonna cover this and See how it does. Comically, don't have a glass lid that like fits this pan, but I think it'll be fine. I think I'm done here. But this looks like a platonic ideal grilled cheese, and it was like slightly faster. It's pretty smart because I feel like you're able to melt the cheese and brown the bread at a similar rate, whereas before the bread was getting a little bit browner, before my cheese was getting all melty. So again, Stunning. Stunning. I like that. I think I'm gonna use that. I think the next thing that I wanna do is I wanna test, this will illustrate my point, I'm gonna do butter on the outside in an effort to see like what that difference is in those smoke points. I think each grilled cheese has probably gone for about three, three and a half minutes. There's a higher chance of it burning because butter has a much lower smoke point than the oil that's in here, which is probably like vegetable, some sort of like hydrogenated oil. Oh, all right. I have the heat the same, mind you. Correct me if I'm wrong, but 
butter's more expensive than mayonnaise. If mayonnaise does the exact same thing, but it's more spreadable and it's cheaper, then like, why wouldn't you do it? I mean, the true test. Because it, it honestly does look pretty good. I like, in my heart of hearts, wanted this to burn a little bit just to prove a point, but I'm a Leo, so. I mean, it's still really good. It's a grilled cheese. All right, so my last variation is going to be trying mayonnaise on the outside, no butter on the inside, to really see if it makes a big difference or not to have butter on the inside. This just really spreads so evenly and smoothly and you can get a nice thin layer of it so you're not like saturating the bread in any kind of fat. It's just truly there to promote the browning. The Maillard reaction, as they say. Oh, making grilled cheeses. Wasn't there a grilled cheese in one of those shows where like it looked like Jesus and they called it the grilled cheeses? Well, now I have to look it up. Oh, <laughs> Glee? It always comes back to Leah Michelle. Wow, I mean, my last few have had a little bit of kind of oily drippage, and it could be the cheese too, but definitely less greasy on the inside than the ones with the butter. I do think that I like it without butter on the inside. I get more of the cheese flavor. I get the sharpness of the cheddar a little bit more when there's like less fat competing with it on the inside. But it was also very delicious with butter on the inside. Like it made it very rich. But to me, I like want to taste the cheese and I think that I can taste the cheese a little bit better when it's not got the butter on the inside. We have our techniques down. Now is where we get really fun and really creative with different bread, different cheese, and some fun fillings. So let's do it. So now for the fun part. I mean, it's all been fun, right? We've had to eat grilled cheeses all day. I'm going to kind of continue with my like experiment vibes and just do one different variable for each thing. So for this, I'm gonna try all cheddar cheese with what we know as our technique, which is mayonnaise and then covering with the lid. And then just trying different breads to see, you know, what bread I like best. This is a polenta Pullman loaf. Get this butter out of my sight, I never wanna see it again. <laughs> just kidding. Butter's delicious. So sourdough is delicious and I love it, but will it grilled cheese? Now I'm gonna cut a couple slices of this uh, brioche. Brioche is like an enriched bread. It's got other sources of fat in there. So it is gonna be a little bit richer than your sourdough, which is truly just like the product of flour and water. Is that gonna be just sacrilege to get like the two biggest middle? All right, ugh, love when they look like little bunnies. But you do have, look, I can see through that. Oh yeah, this mayonnaise is falling right through. <clears throat> My last variation with bread, these pre-sliced ones are just like by nature stale. Like they're kind of stale and we just got them. Maybe that's better. Like in some cases, like when you make stuffing or French toast, you want stale bread. So I don't know, we'll see. So now we've got our four pans going and I'm gonna get all these started at the same time, so. Oh, honestly, looks pretty good. Oh, my. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah, that one we're gonna have to redo there. Uh, I was not gonna escape this day without absolutely like ran shackling one of these. <laughs> Take two. Maybe I should have just done two at a time. <laughs> uh, okay. All right, two were done. This one needs a better chance at life, so I'm just gonna. Okay. Oh yeah, that looks great. Whew. All right. <laughs> I feel like I was just in like a Fast and the Furious movie. These all look really, really good. Some of them feel like really crusty on the outside. Some of them still feel very delicate on the outside, like the brioche one. This one reminds me of um, 
in like Devil Wears Prada when he goes like, there's seven dollars worth of Jarlsberg in there. <laughs> and she doesn't eat the sandwich, which is just so annoying. But he's also, the, Nate is the worst. Nate's the worst, anyway. What? <laughs> What's the diagonal of this? <laughs> oh my god. This is the sourdough bowl that I cut, which looks really, honestly, really good. I really like that because it, it does offer like some pretty sour notes with the sharpness of the cheddar and the sourness of the bread. But I almost feel like I want them to complement each other and not compete with one another. We'll try the, the nice little peasant loaf here. That one is similar, I think, in texture to the last one that I just tried, which was the sourdough bowl, but milder. The bread was kind of like almost a blank canvas for the cheese to shine, which I really appreciated. All right, this is like my like just baked today favorite loaf of bread ever, the polenta pullman. A fabulous loaf of bread, but not for this grilled cheese. I just have to say it. Because the bread is so fresh and so good, I'm almost like doing it a little dirty with the grilled cheese, if that makes sense. I don't know. <laughs> Ooh, the brioche. Mmm. Now that's quite nice. It's pretty rich and buttery and eggy, but I almost want it a little bit more crunch. Like the bread itself is very delicate because it's an enriched bread, so I'm not getting as much of that like play on textures as I did in this bread or even this like kind of country loaf bread. Really good, just maybe a little too soft. I kind of think that the country loaf is the way to go. Peasant loaf, come peasant loaf, yeah. I mean, Julia definitely had a point in her head note of saying like, you don't need to use the nicest bread that's out there in order to like get a really phenomenal grilled cheese because I feel like that's not really the point. I like the peasant loaf and I like the wonder bread, I think the best. There, I said it. <laughs> Now I'm gonna play around with some different cheeses in order to really kind of get back at that, like what's central to the anatomy of a grilled cheese? Obviously the cheese, so let's do it. Back from lunch, everybody ate their salads. I had 600 milligrams of aspirin, two lactate, and four shots of espresso, so I'm ready to go. Now, this is kind of like working overtime. This is where the real fun happens when you can play with different types of cheese, you can play with different fillings, and really just have fun and be kind of fancy about it. So I've got some classic American cheese here, cheddar, I have some Gruyere, which is a really nice kind of like melty Swiss cheese, and then I've got pepper jack cheese, just because I love spice and I love you know, peppers. In Julia's top note, she mentions dabbing a little bit of jam onto it, and she says, don't knock it till you try it. So I'm gonna try it, and then maybe I'll knock it. And then we've got some nice caramelized shallots. Here we've got this compound butter, butter with herbs and garlic and basically different things to make it flavored. How could I forget? Pimento cheese. There's like cream cheese, cheese, pimentos, which are diced red peppers, and mayonnaise. And so it's like kind of all the things that we want on the inside anyway. For this, I am going to use classic Wonder Bread again. This is just gonna give me the most neutral outside because we're really focusing on the inside here. So I've got some tomato here. I not only salted this, I'm also going to dry it off a little bit. The water content of the tomato and like fat of the cheese probably won't play very nicely together. So just dab it off pretty well before you. Ahoy matey. I'm gonna go a little bit of cheddar with American like melted and sandwiched in between. I feel like this would be a good use case for that tomato. I think one of these I want it to be like kind of fun in French, you know? So I think I'm gonna do like the compound butter, Gruyere, caramelized shallot vibe. Second sando, down. I think I'm gonna try pepper jack cheese and the jam. Cause I feel like that gives kind of like a little bit of like pepper jelly, you know? Okay, fun. But this one's gonna be pimento cheese and jalapeno peppers, pickled jalapenos. This would be like my dad's favorite, I think.
Wow, these all look incredibly good. Let's slice these up and try them, shall we? I'm gonna go in with the classic, the tomato mixture of cheddar and American first. The like sharpness of the cheddar with the meltiness of the American cheese. And then that like bite of fresh tomato in there is truly so good. Like very, very into that. Wow. Next I'm gonna go jam, which still is giving like incredible cheese pull. Oh yeah, I like the jam. I'm not gonna knock it because I've tried it. I feel like with something sweet, it's really good to have something like salty and kind of spicy. So the pepper jack gives that, that kick, but the sweetness is mellowed out by the saltiness of the cheese. I kind of want to save the fancy one for last. So I'm gonna go in with pimento. I forgot I put jalapenos in there. Ooh, I mean, that's like Southern summertime to me, like grilled pimento cheese sandwich. But this is like the one that I'm most excited to try, which is this creation with the compound butter and the caramelized shallots. Wow. Wow, that's so good. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I didn't want to like that one as much, only because I'm like, ah, oh, grilled cheese should be like so simple and easy, and like that's definitely the most time-inducive one, but it's worth it. That is so good. <laughs> My ghosts of grilled cheese past. I'm altogether astounded, proud, a little nauseated looking at this, but I'm very happy because all of these things put together have yielded me the best classic grilled cheese. It's not anything super fancy. It's on a peasant loaf, uses mayonnaise on the outside to promote the browning of the bread, and it's got very standard, like your cheddar cheese, your American cheese in there. Has a little something fun with the tomato. It takes five minutes to make, and it like makes you immensely happy. So yes, the winner has gotta be your go-to all-American grilled cheese. This was such a fun experiment to ultimately get my perfect grilled cheese. And I hope that even though this is my version of a perfect grilled cheese, I think that there are some good takeaways for everybody. I have to try it, right? It's still warm on the inside and it's been sitting for a hot minute. That is so good. To me, that like grilled cheese is like maybe one of the most perfect foods because you get like, all of those beautiful textures. You got the crunch on the outside, you have the cheesiness on the inside. You can also do whatever you want with your grilled cheese. I am a Gemini rising, so like my perfect grilled cheese today might not be my perfect grilled cheese tomorrow, and that's okay. So ultimately, all this is to say that if you go to NYT Cooking and you see a recipe that you loved or that you engaged heavily with, leave a comment on it because those comments don't go by the wayside. We really do take them into consideration. So to find more recipes and more like unhinged comments, Janet, I'm talking to you, go to NYT Cooking. Okay, all right, I'm done with the grilled cheeses. Everybody come eat. <laughs>